What is up disc golfers? Today on Iceberg TV, I want to talk about Ricky Wasaki and what he's been able to do in the last uh, six to eight months ever since he's been diagnosed with Lyme disease. A lot of people didn't agree with his treatment plan and Ricky said, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to do the diet. I'm going to do the exercise. I'm going to do the rehab. I'm going to just face this thing my own way. And uh, after this weekend, we can't really argue with the results. Um, I want to just have a look at this clip that we saw, you know, way back when, you know, he really started feeling the Lyme disease. And a lot of people were thinking that Ricky may never come back to win ever again. And I know that sounds extreme, but based on how he was feeling, he was in no condition to win. So let's just have a quick recap of what we saw when Ricky first had the Lyme disease. You know, I'm, I'm really, I'm really excited to, to get to 100%. That's what I, that's, I'm putting so much time and effort into my health and wellness to, to get my body at 100% and optimized. And, and that's, that's all I've been focusing on. For sure. And what are you doing specifically to kind of treat, treat different? Yeah, so I mean stretching um, with the inflammation. I was doing ro rolling it out because it's you know, a lot of liquid forms uh, from the inflammation. So I'm doing a lot of rolling. Uh, obviously, diet a lot, a lot of anti-inflammatory foods. Um, I'm making like ginger, turmeric, uh, you know, juices in the mornings to really counterbalance, try and counteract the inflammation that's going on in my body. Uh -huh. So you know, supplements, you know, all the different, so I'm doing, you know, tons of stuff like that, I'm trying ice, ice baths, just to try and, you know, really, because it gets real hot when you're inflamed, and so I've just been doing so much, and, you know, all that stuff has been helping a lot to get me to the point where I can play, but I'm just hoping that, you know, I can start focusing more on just, you know, I, I'm practicing a lot, but it's hard to practice when you're, you know, when you're limping and have, you know, can't, can't put pressure on my plant leg, which is my back foot, and so it really hinders my shots completely. And I, you know, I was playing at like 50%, if that, last week. And So I think Ricky's probably not 100%, but I think he's a lot closer than he was here. So if we come back to the Silver Cup, uh, big shout out to Par Save Productions. Um, honestly, I think that, like, I always, I've been watching Par Save Productions forever, and I think their coverage is just as good as Joe Mez's, honestly, if not better. Like, the only thing Jomez is doing is the follow flights. That's the only difference. But the music, the camera angles, the uh, they add a lot more cinematic value than Jomez does. They take a lot more B-roll and they just make everything look and sound. I mean, the absolute best it can sound. So the Silver Cup, it was a really exciting tournament and we saw Ricky playing extremely well in this tournament. He had a great event. Uh, he, we had Calvin Heimberg take up second place. I'm starting to think that Calvin Heimberg's cursed and he's just no longer able to win anymore. I think he's only going to win when Paul Macbeth comes back. Paul, Paul Macbeth motivates him to uh, you really fight for that win. And, and Calvin's playing really good golf, but I'm really just wanting to, wanting to see Calvin compete against Paul again. And uh, I think that's going to be the thing that pushes Calvin to really get into that number one spot is knowing he's got it knowing he has to beat paul he keeps being in the conversation i think this is his like it might be his third or fourth second place in a row so i mean calvin's going absolutely crazy and this tournament was really fun to watch uh james conrad's playing really well but we all know that ricky took the win and things are looking really really good for ricky um the thing about the lyme disease is ricky might be able to come out and win one event but that doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to be able to continue to play at a high level. Uh, we have a good example of a player here. I believe Johnny McRae also was diagnosed with Lyme disease like back in the day, and it affected him as well, and it still affects him to this day. He, he can't play every single event because he starts getting that inflammation, especially being out in the heat too much. Uh, you can see Johnny McRae is not that old. He looks a lot older than he is. Like he's older than the rest of the guys playing in the MPO field for the most part, but he's not that old, but he, he looks older. And I think the Lyme disease has taken a toll on his body. Um, I think Ricky's going to do everything he can for the rest of his life to keep his longevity, but sometimes there's nothing you can do. And every case of Lyme disease is, is different from the last. So let's, let's just hope for Ricky that he can be that top guy because he's going to be the guy to challenge Paul more than anybody else. I think Calvin's close, but like obviously we saw this weekend that really when Ricky's playing well, he can't be beat no matter how good you play. No matter how good you play, you're not going to beat Ricky easily. So if you don't already know, we have Ricky came in. He won by four strokes. He, he smashed it. 
Uh, we didn't have Paul in the field. If if we had Paul Macbeth in the field, his writing, you know, in the 1060s would bring all these writings up just a little bit. You'd have another propagator in the field to bring the ratings up. But Ricky shot, you know, a couple points above his rating on average, which is really good. So we might see Ricky start pushing that 1050 range. We also didn't have Eagle McMahon in the field. He's one of those like top tier, you know, top two, top three rated players. So just having those guys in the field brings the ratings up a little bit, you know, as long as everybody played fairly similar to how they would normally play. So I think Ricky shot a little bit hotter rounds than this, but because we didn't have the highest players in the world in the field, I think that brought the ratings down a little bit. Ricky played some really good golf and this was a tough, very good course. And the one thing that I liked about this course is that it had lots of holes that really just aren't birdieable. And I think that's what we need. A lot of people disagree with me that I think the disc golf courses are a little bit too easy. The tournament this weekend showed the value in having holes that can't really be birdied or holes where it's extremely gratifying or there's a high risk, high reward birdie out there and you have to make that decision of, do I wanna go for the two and risk the four? Uh, that's the kind of holes that these players need to be playing. They need There needs to be a risky birdie or a safe par. So you can go for that birdie, but if you miss, you're probably taking that bogey. And I love those kinds of holes, and I think that's how we need to be challenging these players. Then you really have to decide each and every hole, am I going to go for this risky birdie, or am I in a position where I can coast it out? These are the types of decisions we want to see these players making. I don't want them to have just a high percentage play on every single hole where they can just throw a hyzer to the middle of the fairway and wind up with a birdie. I don't find that very exciting. I find it much more exciting when they have to throw a very skilled shot to obtain the birdie or they can be not risky and go for that par. That's just my opinion on that. And I think this course showed us the best of both worlds. There were a few easier holes, but not many. And then there was a lot of really difficult holes. This is totally different from the preserve. And we see, saw a lot of different players being up near the top that we didn't see at the preserve. None of the power throwers finished very well at this tournament, except for Calvin and James. But a lot of the other power throwers, I mean, they were nowhere to be found. And the last thing that I want to talk about is uh, people, people have been asking me, well, where the heck's Paul Macbeth? And Paul Macbeth's still recovering. The only reason he played in the DDO is because it's going to be on CBS. And that was probably part of what they wanted. They said, they probably said, if, if we're going to uh, put you guys on our network, we want the best player in this tournament, or we're probably not nearly as interested. Because Paul Macbeth has, you know, over 100,000 followers on Instagram. He's got like 125,000 followers. Everybody knows about Paul Macbeth. Even people who don't play disc golf know and follow Paul Macbeth. So they want him in the field. And the fact that he won is going to make that just that much more watchable to the new followers of the sport to see the best player in the world winning a tournament on live TV, on, you know, on, on an actual TV network. And I think that's absolutely good. And... I think we should definitely thank Paul for, you know, he, he's risking his body a little bit when he does that because obviously he's not playing. So if, if he was well and he was 100%, he would have played in these last couple of events, but he isn't and he's not. And he was probably doing tons of pain management. He was probably taking anti-inflammatories. He's probably going through all kinds of stuff with that ankle still. And uh, I definitely think Paul did a big solid for the sport, putting his body on the line to play in the DDO and winning it and putting it all out on the line because he knows how important it is to get disc golf on TV and he sees disc golf one day being as big as normal golf. And I definitely think we owe Paul a thank you for doing that because he didn't have to risk his body. I mean, that's how he makes a living. He could have injured his ankle even worse or maybe he did hurt his ankle even worse, but he did it to grow the sport. So definitely a big thanks to Paul. I thought that was really good on him and that just shows how much he cares about the sport. Big thanks to the patrons. If you wanna become a patron, click the link in the description below. If you wanna check out some Iceberg TV merch, the link is in the description below as well. Thank you for watching. This is Iceberg TV and take care.